Hi, it's Tammy from Lou Fru Fru, and today we're going to work on, uh, continue to work on the squishy Amazon folder journal, but I wanted to uh, fo kind of follow up with the guest checks that I made um, using the faux buttons in the faux button video. If you didn't see that one, I'll link it in the comments. This is the one I made on camera. And so after the camera was turned off, I made several others, and I'll be listing these in my shop, but I just wanted to show you how cute that they turned out with the little buttons. So uh, let's get started on the squishy journal. journal time. I really need to think of a better name for this journal, but to me it's squishy journal. Um, as you can see, I've added a couple of things since the last video where we uh, covered the Amazon squishy envelope. Um, I put lace here and here on the edge. And I also changed this a little bit. If you remember, we had just just the number um, like here on the back and I decided that just wasn't gonna work for me. So I put a little cog with this little uh, crocheted piece under it and then put the number back on. And I like that a lot better. So um, basically what we're gonna talk about today are the signatures and how I put those together and just kind of how I prepare to do a journal. Um, and uh, I didn't think you'd wanna watch me pick out a bunch of papers and stuff like that um, on video. So I've already done that part, but I will walk you through what I did uh, to prepare. Um, excuse my band-aid, I had a run-in with my fussy cut scissors this morning and um, had to uh, put a little bandage on to keep going. Um, okay, on the inside, I did end up adding fabric to this middle piece and uh, I just used the same fabric that I used on the outside and I have to say that I like that. Uh, so that's what the inside cover uh, looks like at the moment. And here are the signatures. I prepared three, and of course they're not sewn together or anything. I've just cut the pages down and, and picked the pages that I was going to use so we can kind of flip through those. I picked several different kinds of paper, and I also picked several different sizes just because I like that look. Um, no particular reason, um, rhyme or reason for it other than it's just the way that I like it. So we've got uh, some page from an old typewriting instruction manual uh, that I just ripped in half and folded around. Uh, this is a dictionary page that I will... Um, get in there and I couldn't decide if if I wanted to hinge it and make it so that it wraps around the other side or if I just want to mount it on this page. So right now it's just kind of hanging. Um, then we have some just regular coffee dyed paper. I have this bag which is nice and crinkly and it is just a wax sandwich bag that uh, I actually got at Target and um, I just think they're really cool and they make a really neat pocket. Um, and then we have, uh, this is a page out of a, a replica of a Montgomery Ward catalog um, and uh, I just, you know, tore a page out and cut it to the size. 
um, and I picked a page that had, this one particular page has like typewriters and stuff on it. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, and then we have just a piece of smaller, no big paper with the holes and it's been tea dyed. And then this is, I found a book at my local thrift store that was our local paper's headlines for like 200 years worth of headlines. And so that's just a page ripped out of that and folded in half. And then I have an envelope and I have put an envelope in each signature. I sealed it up and then slit just a piece off the top. And I'm wrapping that around, and that will cause a pocket on each side, which will um, make some journaling cards to slide in there. A piece of stenographer's paper out of a stenographer pad. Uh, this is a piece of, or a page, a couple pages from a shorthand book. Uh, and these pages were single pages because the book was glued, and so it didn't there wasn't a good way to get out double pages. So everything is a single page and I just hinge them. You just take a piece of paper and glue down the center and then score it and fold it and then you have your double page and you can use that. Um, this is, I did the same thing with this. This is from a old, old ledger book where the book was this narrow and, you know, quite long. And so there again, um, the way those books are sewn, you can't get double pages out. And so I ripped the pages out singly and cut them down and hinged them with a scrap piece of the uh, newspaper print that I had drop off from where I cut it. Then we have another piece of coffee dye paper. And then we have, this was in, I don't even know where I got this, but it, I think it was in like maybe a photo album, a ring binder photo album in between the little pocket sheets. And um, I just think it's really neat paper and I like the holes in it. So I've got that in there and then a, another piece of ledger paper. And um, so I think that's going to be a good size once it is all sewn together and once we get through um, putting all the little embellishments and everything in. There won't be a lot of embellishments in this one because I think the paper has so much character. But I, I am planning on like the envelopes in there. We're going to put some journal cards in there. And... Um, there's, I'm going to make a couple of tags uh, and stuff like that. So, like I said, there are three of them, and they are all the same um, as far as the layout and the type of papers. And then you can see when we put them in the cover, it's going to make a nice, good journal. Um you know, once we have everything sewn in. And um, my plan is to use the pamphlet stitch on these to sew these in. And I will do that on screen so that you can, or at least one of them. You don't want to sit and watch me do the whole journal, but um, I'll at least do one of them so that you can see the process. And then I've just got this, which I'm not totally happy with this string either, and I may change that out for a piece of ribbon. Um, this is just embroidery thread, and because it has the separate threads, it's not staying together for me like I want it to. And so I may switch that out with a piece of um, ribbon or maybe even a piece of uh, suede or something like that. I haven't decided yet. I, I think I have some gray like suede cord that might look pretty good. So, but anyway, that's the concept for how it will close. Um, the other things that I've done uh, in prep is I have taken my project folder, which I have posted about these on my Facebook page, but I wanted to show you. 
Um, usually I have a minimum of three different journals going at a time, and I have these pockets. They're actually supposed to hold rubber stamps, I think. I got them at Hobby Lobby. But I use them for project folders. And so what I do when I um, get an idea for a journal is I get one of these out and um, it does a couple of things. One, it keeps me from, oh, I'm gonna work on a page. What am I gonna put on it? You know, let me go dig this out. You know, and then to me, that's just a time waster. And also it limits me to how many projects that I have going in at a time because I have a tendency to think about something, oh, I really like that idea, and then, you know, I start doing that, and I don't finish what I'm doing. So, if I have these, and I have three of them, three is plenty pro of projects to be going at one time, and so, it kind of makes me limit myself on what I'm working on. So, what I do is once I get an idea for, you know, kind of where I'm going with the journal, and you can see from this one I'm going kind of with, with the office industrial um, kind of vibe, lots of letters and numbers, but to the, you know, I also want it to have, you know, a softer um, feel to it with, you know, the colors and also with the lace and um, that kind of thing. So. As I'm going through my stash, I'm picking out things that I think may work. Will I use everything in here? No. Will I probably go find something else that's not in here? Yes. But this really helps with trimming down the time that it takes to make a journal if you already have the biggest part of what you're going to use in one spot. So, I went through all my stuff and anything that I thought would work in this journal, I put in this little project folder. So, you can see I've got paper scraps, I've got tissue paper, I've got envelopes, I've got drops of different kinds of uh, ledger papers, uh, just anything that I could think of. I've got a time card in here. I've got a clock, some tags, some stamps. Um, I even have some vintage invoices. I have these cards, which is, I think I'm gonna use these cards in um, the envelope that I cut. And these are old, old. You can see they're dated in the 30s. And I think they must have been from like an insurance company because you can see, you know, that they paid this guy thirty-seven fifty for a loss of accident. They paid this guy $211 for fire. You know, so this must have been some kind of insurance company. Um, but I think they're really interesting. And they came with these really cool dividers, uh, alphabetical dividers, and these are actually metal. So I thought those would be cool to maybe either use the cards or I, these will actually come off and fit over the edges, or at least use these, this part as a page tab. So I thought those were cool. So I stuck a couple of those in there. Um, I've got a clock, I've got, you know, a claim tag. Um, I've also got, I went through my Tim Holtz paper dolls and I picked out some that I thought looked like, um, would be cute for, you know, co-workers, office workers. Um, I've got some scraps of kind of the colors, uh, that are in the, in the cover because I do want to incorporate some co color. I don't want it to be just all neutral. I've got another little snapshot of a woman um, there. I, this is a Tim Holtz die that is just the uh, 
I don't even know what you would call that, but you know, when you rip a piece of paper out, the little edges, I've got a couple of those in there that I thought would be cute in a collage. Um, just all kinds of anything that I thought, some postcards that are, you know, the city. Um, I've got a die cut of a typewriter. I've got this little black and white typewriter numbers. I've got this little drop of out of an old magazine. Just, uh, you know, stacks and stacks of stuff that I think will work. And like I said, will I use all this? Probably not. But I at least have it all in one spot to be used. Um, another thing that I did is... I picked out a couple of sheets of paper um, that I thought, full sheets of paper. These are from Tim Holtz that I thought would work. Uh, this is just, you know, has a bunch of ledger sheets on it. And that's the back. And then this one's like a calendar type thing. And that's the back. And as you can see, that color is going to go really well. So those are two full sheets to work with. And my thought is, um, for these is, and I will show you kind of the ins some inspiration pieces. This is an altered time card that I had made. And I thought one of those would be really cute. A couple of those, and as you can see, saw I have a alter time card in my or a blank time card in my project folder so I thought that would make a cute tag um, in the journal and I really don't mind that color even though we don't have any blue on the cover um, you know I think that still looks pretty cute but we'll probably stick to more of the colors that we have on the um, cover when we go to make ours. And then another thing that I do is I make stuffed journal pockets. And these are a couple that I have listed on Etsy. Um, but I thought one of these would be cute to make, not in this theme, obviously, but to make one of these out of the big sheet of paper and let me see that this this string is not going to work. And put it here and fill it up with all kinds of fun stuff. And um, like it's just got you know pictures and tags and different things in it. Um, so. I think we'll use one of those big sheets of paper and make something similar to these and fit and put it, make it for the inside cover. I think that'll be really cute. So, and then I also have this little composition book that I want to say that I got these at like Dollar Tree or something and there's like three or four of them maybe two of them in a pack um but i thought that this would be cute to alter the cover and maybe stick it in the stuff pocket you know just stick it down in there like that inside the front cover and then you know you would have a little notebook as well to um jot your make you do your journaling in and these are really good actually for um coming from the dollar tree because the signatures are actually sewn in so um that's kind of a unique thing for those but i thought that would be cute uh other things that i think i'm going to do um is use uh some snippets um let me grab my snippet roll and I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, 
Okay, this is my snippet roll. And basically, when I'm trying to, to decide what my next project's gonna be, or I have maybe a little bit of time, but not really time to um, work on a, a big journal, I work on a snippet roll. And this is basically just a calculator ribbon uh, tape um, that I got, I found it at the thrift store um, for like 50 cents or something like that. Um, but you obviously can cut your own strips as well. And then I make these little snippets um, just with little scrap pieces. And then when you go to make a journal, or work on a journal, you can go through your snippets and pick out, you know, ones that are will go with whatever you're working on. These, um, you know, have a lot of florals and butterflies and whatever, but it would be just as easy to make some of these with the numbers and uh, letters and stuff like that. And so I think I may make up some of these here in my next little maybe after work journaling session where I'm, I'm waiting for the hubby to get home or dinner to be cooked or whatever and so I just keep unrolling it and just make them and then when I'm done I roll it back up and tie it up and you know until the next time so those are kind of cool and we can do a video on those if you're interested just let me know in the comments if you are, and I'll be glad to do a video on showing you how to make those. And the last thing that I did, and I'll tie that back up in a minute, is I went ahead and made my master board for this particular project. I really like the master board idea because I think it's a way for you to use little bits and pieces of what you're going to put in your journal and put it in the snippet to tie, I mean, in the master board to tie it together. And then, of course, we will cut these up and make tags or, or journal cards or whatever out of them um, to use in the journal. And again, uh, I did the same process that's in my other video, which I will link below. Um, but I just did it on an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. I, you know, tore everything out and glued it down. I did the smushing in the, in the distress ink and then I ran a photocopy. So this is actually the photocopy. And then, uh, this will be the one that I will cut up and I will embellish to use in the journal. So... That's where we are, guys. Um, short and sweet today. Uh, but, uh, you know, all these steps are necessary to get everything ready. And they're, although they're necessary steps, they're not very exciting steps. And so, I didn't want to put you through the torture of watch me pick out paper or cut paper or, you know, um, glue paper down for something that I've already done for you guys or collect things to put in my project folder. But I did want you to understand what my thinking is um, when I do a journal and hopefully it will help some of you guys come up with a process that works for you uh, for future journals. So I think our next step will be to start embellishing this puppy and uh, I actually think it's going to be pretty cute. I think it's going to work out well and um, I'm I'm pretty excited about where it's going so far and uh, I hope you guys are too. So um, again if you have not subscribed please do. We will continue this until it's finished and uh, if you have any comments or suggestions, let me know that as well. And don't forget to hit the bell, and that'll let you know um, 
when I have a new video out, I'm going to try to do, I don't think I'm going to actually make this one um, go live until Tuesday since it is a holiday weekend. And um, uh, I'll probably do one on Tuesday and then have another one on Thursday and then be back on Saturday. So um, I'm kind of thinking now that I'm getting into it that that is going to be my schedule. So it'll be Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So again, thanks guys and um, thanks for supporting me and uh, I really do appreciate it. See you next time.